Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. This is really exciting. Today I want to speak about one of my all-time favorite psychological effects, the Pygmalion effect. Now, the Pygmalion effect comes down to this. My expectations of you will influence your behavior, which means if I believe you can do something, you'll be able to do it. Now, if I believe you will fail, guess what? You will fail. Oh my gosh. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> My childhood dream just came true. I have psychic powers! Okay, so before you think this is rubbish, number one, it's not. <laughs> number two, over 80% of the research studying the Pygmalion effect has established it did indeed happen. Three, there are some conditions here for it to work, which I will explain in this video. So I've talked about the Pygmalion effect before. It's a really important one, you know. I've detailed it both in my course on leadership and the one on parenting because yes, those are the two main areas where together with sports, the Pygmalion effect shows up. But you can easily apply this to any relationship really yes even with your partner but i'm getting ahead of myself here so the pygmalion effect was first established by harvard psychologist robert rosenthal in 1964 we teach more to those from whom we expect more we're able to give them more information so that they are in fact able to do a better job. He came with an interesting experiment where an IQ test was taken from kids in elementary school. Then he told the teacher which kids had the most potential to bloom that year. Not a bad mind either. There's talent, oh yes, and a thirst to prove yourself. And indeed they did. When Rosenthal came back at the end of the year, the kids he had pointed out did indeed show the biggest IQ gains. But the thing is, the list with the kids with highest potential was fake. They had chosen the kids at random. These kids didn't have any more predisposition to any other kid in the class. The only variable that had changed was the expectations from the school teacher. Now that's remarkable, isn't it? Now the funny thing is, follow-up studies showed that it only works if the expectations are real. He is the one. If the teacher is in on it, it doesn't work. It has to be real. You can't fake the Pygmalion effect. If you think your kid is an idiot, it won't help to tell him he's a genius because that's not how it works. This is not wishful thinking. You know, many parents are afraid to confront their kids with negativity. <laughs> They fear that the negative emotions may harm them. And the Pygmalion effect could be misinterpreted in this context. You see, you have to remain positive, otherwise your kid will fail. Now, yes, because the Pygmalion effect works both ways, right? If you think someone is not capable of doing something, he or she will fail. Anyway, so remaining positive at all costs is a common misconception. That's not what the Pygmalion effect is all about. It's not, hey honey, uh, you ended 15, that's so great. No, it's, honey, I knew you could do it. And you did, you're first. It's not about finding excuses and giving a positive twist to things. It's about high performance based on high expectations. You do those things, gentlemen, and I guarantee you, at the end of the game, we will be there. So the role of managers, teachers, parents, coaches, well, it's pretty huge. They have an immense power. Their expectations of their protege can send someone to the stars or make a nobody out of them. And this is what breaks my heart, really, you know? There are so many kids, just because they live in a poor neighborhood who will never rise up. Mm, clouded this boy's future is. Why? Because nobody believes in them. They don't get the positive reinforcement of their self-esteem through countless little details on a daily basis, most of them being on a subconscious level, which in the end are adding up and turn these kids in healthy, balanced individuals with high self-esteem and self-confidence to take on difficult challenges in life. So the thing is, you can't fake it. You're like a big bear, man. So you're not just like fucking No, I'm not fucking with Honestly. you. Honestly. Whatever you truly believe about the person in front of you, you will end up sending signals, most of them subconsciously. And again, on the receiving end, subconsciously, the other person will integrate those signals and act accordingly. So how can we make this thing work? If you have a total loser in front of you, or you're the new manager to a losing team in sports or in business, or your kid always comes home with bad grades and you start to expect that to happen the next time, what do you do? Because those expectations will show. Now you know that and they will reinforce the same outcome over and over again. Glad to something, mommy. 
It's a catch-22. Now what? Well, to me, the answer lies with Carol Dweck. Mindsets. There are two types of mindsets. You have the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. With a fixed mindset, you can't change a thing. If you're an idiot, you're an idiot. Everybody knows I'm the dumbest. I can't handle calculus. If you're a loser, you're a loser. If you have a lot of potential, well, you'll get far in life. It's fixed, you see. However, if you, as the mentor, the manager, teacher, whatever, if you have a growth mindset, you believe people can change. So if you have an idiot in front of you. You want me to do it for you? Yes. You're supposed to say no. You believe that person can change, can evolve. If you have a loser in front of you, you believe that through hard work, you can turn that around. Well, I'm going to have to get tough. Bullets are going to have to start flying. We're going to have to work right through Christmas break, okay? So the current state of the person in front of you doesn't matter anymore. It's all about the belief that someone can change, can evolve. And this is how you can genuinely look a total loser in the eyes and say, I believe in you, genuinely, authentically, and make that Pygmalion effect work for you. So yes, go ahead and read Carol Dweck's book. Of course they will have to work for it and, and they will have to put in the hours. Here, let me suggest you pick up Angela Duckworth's book, Grit. It's a perfect complement to Carol Dweck as it really builds on it. Now, understanding and integrating these three concepts, you know, the Pygmalion effect, the growth mindset and grit, these three are together really the foundation for 80% of success as a manager, a coach, a teacher, a parent. Well, in any relationship really, where you get to guide and advise people. Now, of course, there's a lot more to talk about with the Pygmalion effect. You know, the importance of setting realistic expectations, the importance of clear communication on positive reinforcement instead of harsh negative critics and so on. But in essence, it's all about the power of expectations. Looking someone straight in the eyes and saying, I believe in you and meaning it, that's powerful. So don't look at people for what they are, but what they could be. Don't define them by the missed opportunities, but the ones to come. That may sound difficult, challenging you, but guess what? I know you can do it. I believe in you. So have you had a teacher or a mentor or someone who believed in you, who helped you become who you are? Leave your experience in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out some of our other episodes. And if you want the real stuff, you go to brainacademy.com. Join our 300,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen your mind.